Uh, great, thanks, Andrew. I'm really excited to be here in Fargo and talk about our approach to uh, autonomous systems and delivering these solutions to farmers to add value to their operations. So, um, just before I do, maybe I'll explain a little bit about PTX. It's a new brand that w that was um, came out this year, but it's uh, encompassing a whole bunch of different organizations that have been around for a long time. So, PTX really is the um, technology and precision egg arm of AgCo, um, and it consists of uh, different organizations that deliver solutions to farmers uh, around the crop cycle. Um, in, in particular, it breaks out into uh, two large groups under, under the PTX brand, which is PTX Trimble, which is what I'm part of, and Precision Planting. Uh, PTX Trimble is a recent joint venture as of April 1st uh, this year that consolidated a, a number of different organizations. Um, the most well known of those would be Trimble for sure. And so that's a joint venture between AECO and Trimble. And then Precision Planting is a well known brand for many years, and there's a number of other technology. Uh, companies that were kind of amalgamated into that. So, so these two together will, will bring those depth of capabilities and start to deliver um, more solutions to the farmer at accelerated pace and more integrated solutions that really work well together across all areas of the crop cycle. Okay, so talking a little about uh, autonomy, um, I, I think it's good to think about what are the drivers and the main needs of autonomy. So um, at a very high level overall, there's a number of fundamental challenges, um, but ultimately there's a need to produce more food uh, for a growing population in the world, and there's these challenges that are faced in doing that. One of them is the, the, the limitations of, of the methodologies that we've used in the past over the last 50 plus years. We've grown our yield per area a lot through the application of different chemicals um, for a variety of different uh, um, fertilizers and, and crop protection and a variety of other things. Um, but we've both, uh, we've learned a lot in those times and there's challenges to sustainability to the land. Um, and to farming operations in terms of cost. And then also, um, you know, there's the uh, general public has been more aware of health considerations there too. So there's really a push away to find new ways to accelerate yield growth to feed this growing population. At the same time, there's been a shift of people moving from urban or from rural areas to urban areas. And that has two impacts. One is that there used to be a lot more farms and, and each of those farms would be smaller. And now those farms are getting larger and larger, which increases the complexity of the operations. As well as, as um, the other effect of that is that there's a shortage of available labor. So um, I, I see on my slide here, my Canadianism is coming out as I have a U in this world of labor, so I'm not insulting the Americans here, but I am Canadian, so that's why I've got a U there. Um, so, but anyway, the shortage of labor is, is really to do with people who um, are just having less people at the key times of, of the seasons to um, run equipment and do all the things that need to be done on the farm. So farmers ultimately are pushed more to push to do more with less, and so that's the fundamental challenge. Autonomy has been around for a number of years. It's really an emerging state, and I, I bet you if you ask 10 people uh, what is autonomous agriculture, you get 10 different answers, and that's because there are a lot of variety to, to autonomy. It can come in the form of robots, fixed function machines that perform a particular job. It can come in the form of autonomous tractors, really versatile power platforms that can do a lot of different jobs. But what I've, I've been working in autonomy, autonomy for almost a decade in agriculture, and kind of what I've learned and applied, our team has delivered solutions across all of these, is that um, ultimately autonomy is a workflow problem. It is really about um, uh, have, doing a job, and there's lots of different jobs to do in these operations, and so there's no such thing as a universal autonomous um, system. They, they are really autonomy for particular tasks. And the other thing I've learned is that there's a real importance to lower the barrier adoption. So you might have the perfect robot or whatever it might be that can do some job and, and works really well, but if you're asking the farmer to fundamentally change their whole operations, that's too big of a barrier to jump. So, so easing that adoption by having things that fit into existing workflows. So our approach um, at uh, PTX is really what we call a retrofit mixed fleet uh, approach. And, and so there's three elements to this. One is the retrofit approach. And so we see uh, we're delivering autonomy through retrofit solutions that can be outfitted to existing tractors. Um, and this is really important to lower that barrier of adoption and decouple the decision to 
add autonomy for um, value to the operations from buying a new tractor. A lot of farmers might have the equipment they need, um, the right tractor, but they need, um, they could really use some help um, that autonomy can offer. Second part of this is mixed fleet. And so um, we really have a strategy across all of AECO and at PTX, um, but as delivering a mixed fleet solutions. So particularly with PTX is, is um, farmers need the ability to choose the color of equipment that they have. And so we're not uh, forcing our solutions around only particular brands of equipment, but making it available to farmers of all different types of brands and really providing solutions to the mixed fleet farmer. And then finally, across the crop cycle, we're developing autonomy solutions, initially focused in corn and soybeans operations, but around all the different tasks that farmers need in, uh, around the crop cycle. So I'll show a few examples. So, so two examples I'll show here is our autonomous grain cart solution and our autonomous tillage solution. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, the retrofit approach is, is a kit that's installed on, on tractors of different makes and models. So initially we're launching the we're launch, we have launched the autonomous grain cart for delivery in 2025 for John Deere and our 8000 series tractors, tractors and then it'll prevent fan tractors and then, and then it'll build other brands and other makes and models, models later, later as well. well. And we've given each of our kits names, Jesse, Frankie, for the, and, and there'll be a Charlie coming soon, um, to give the idea to the farmer that they're hiring an autonomous operator and that is somebody that is helping their, their operations. So the fundamental challenge with the autonomous grain cart application, um, or that, that, that is solving, is um, trying to compress the harvest time. So the, there, uh, during harvest, there's a lot of value in getting the crop off the field in what you call the ideal harvest window. If you wait longer in the season, there's losses due to uh, moisture loss and, and potential crop damage that will reduce yield. And, and, uh, we found that about 33% of crops in the Midwest US are actually harvested outside of that ideal window. And out of those, there's a 10% loss on yield. So that turns out to be pretty significant dollars to the farmer. So the va a lot of the reasons that, um, that, that uh, farmers are not able to get their crop off in the ideal time is because of the, uh, because of the workflow. They often have to stop the combine to unload. And so having a grain cart and a grain cart operator um, is, is great to keep, be able to keep that combine going, but often uh, people are struggled with finding available labor at the right time. Um, and, and so I'll walk through the workflow maybe with the video just for, for time. I'll show a video of the solution here, but maybe I'll just touch on, on the autonomous uh, system. And this is making the point that every autonomous system has a workflow that is unique to the job that it's performing. Um, and there's basically three steps to it. It's a staging, it's putting the cart where you want it when you're getting close to unloading. The, the call for pickup, which is the auto unload of the harvester, and then a returning to truck to be unloaded. So I'll show a video here of some uh, recent video uh, of the system in, in action. Uh, so, and I'll talk through it as, as I'm kind of showing the video there. So it's a little bit slow, so I'm not sure if, uh, what's going on with the video. So I'll probably have to not show the whole video here just because of something's with the video there. But, but anyway, the autonomous, uh, there's an autonomous kit that's outfit on the tractor, so there's no driver in that tractor at all. Um, the operator of the system has an iPad in the combine. And so the, uh, um, from the iPad, they can set the machine to stage at a location when they're getting ready to unload, and it'll automatically plan a path and, and consider what's been harvested and what hasn't, so it doesn't drive over any crop that hasn't been harvested. And then it'll wait for the farmer to, to, for its next instructions. And from there, they could do the call to pick up, which here again is showing slow motion. It looks faster in real life. <laughs> um, but, but it comes up alongside the harvester and, and will follow exactly with the harvester. Uh, and in this mode, the, operate, the user interface in the combine on the iPad changes to see a view of the cart with a target on it so they can nudge forward and backwards and put, put the crop exactly where they need to in the cart. Um, and so, uh, so this is a really useful because it also kind of alleviates the stress of the unload operation, which often has you know a lot of swearing over radio is the typical way that it's done today. Um, but here you can put the cart exactly where you need to. So there's a lot of control and 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 reduces the stress of this operation as well. And then you put it, to, you send it to truck, and you hit one button that goes to a, a preset of truck zone for every field, um, and there it goes and and it goes to the truck zone, wait to be unloaded. Um, it's a manual operation to unload and then put back into autonomous and then kind of cycles through that. So, so this is our first. We just had the commercial launch for this a couple of weeks at Farm Progress Show in Iowa and is available for delivery in 2025 to farmers in the Midwest. 
So moving along, I'll just show the tillage here um, as well to give you the idea of uh, moving around the crop cycle. And so again, we're using the same core autonomy stack um, and then and a lot of the same core um, autonomous uh, kits that are installed onto different tractors, but for an entirely different job and different workflow, which is, which is tillage. Um, tillage has a, a, a different workflow than the one that I just explained for the grain cart, where here um, it's much more the operator um, sets it up and then goes away and does other things. So the value is a lot in, well, there's value across a lot of different areas, but it's certainly in the time of, of um, the operator to go do more valuable things than just to cover a field for tillage. We found through a lot of the systems that we've developed over the years that um, it's really difficult to pre-plan a field and say, okay, have a plan and then execute that plan when you're in a back office somewhere. You need to be able to adjust when you're in the field because there's a ton of variables um, to that. And so for this workflow, we actually have a manual driving. The, the headland pass is done with, um, with a person in the cab and that allows them to take a look at the field. If there's wet spots or there's other things that are maybe um, just different around that day, they, they can kind of set the outline of what, where they want the tillage task to be executed within that, and then they can also set up the tillage equipment to be ideal for, for the conditions there too. So once they've done a headline pass, pass on their, on their uh, smartphone, um, they, they'll set up the, the path planning, and so it, there's a whole bunch of things about the width of the implement and the direction of travel and a variety of those things, but it'll create a plan automatically based on that outline that was just driven. Um, to cover that area um, for the tillage operation. Uh, then the operator sets the machine into autonomous mode. It's a very simple operation to do that within the cab. And then they go away and their user interface is their phone. And so they can go and be doing all sorts of other things. There's notifications that can be set up. Well, certainly there's notifications if anything goes wrong or it stops, it'll notify the operator. You can look in with cameras and see anything that's going on. You can have it take staged pictures at different stages so you can see um, go back and look at the quality of the task as well. And you can set up um, different uh, targets, like tell me when it's, uh, you know, there's only 10% left, because then I'll get ready to come back and take it to the next field. So you can set up those dynamic things and all a really intuitive user interface on, on smartphones. And then once you get out of the cab and put it in autonomous mode, they'll set it to go and, and those machines start with the with, uh, tillage application. So again, here's a couple of videos that we took um, recently at our Eggco Tech Day. Um, where we highlight a lot of this uh, uh, technology. Um, again, for some reason, they're in slow motion. <laughs> it's not intentional. Um, but, uh, but it's showing here, again, across the mixed fleet. So you can see on a Fen tractor as well as on a John Deere tractor and with different tillage implements from different manufacturers, um, the autonomous uh, um, solution in the tillage application. And so as I let this play a little bit, you'll see um, you know, coming from the top view or there, you can see a lot more of um, the turns and things like that that are happening as, as uh, the job is being executed. So again, the value for this for farmers is different than the, the shortness of harvest that I talked about with the grain cart. This is about the usage of time, but there's also agronomic benefits um, and, and it's, it's very operation dependent. And some of those agronomic benefits are about the timeliness of tillage relative to uh, if, it's, if it's spring tillage in front of planting, so you wanna make sure that you're planting at the ideal time or it could be um, within mixing different um, nutrients into the soil until until within uh, particular periods of time after that as well. So there's a ton of advantages for the quality of task. There's a ton of advantages for the use of the the operator's time, um, and and again, it's just allowing more of. Um, it's addressing that challenge of, of how to, farmers can spend their time on these increasingly large and complex operations so that the things that take a ton of time and can be done in a more automated way um, are done so they can spend their time elsewhere there too. And so, yeah, so th that's kind of the, the general overview. As you can see, these are two examples. We'll continue to work around that crop cycle and you'll continue to see on a regular basis more solutions that are being delivered from PTX and on autonomy solutions. And, and each one of those solutions we deliver first of thinking about the farmer and thinking about what is the problem that we're solving. We're not delivering solutions that um, just for the sake of interesting technology or because we can, you know, there's a lot of things we can do that we choose not to do because we don't see where the return on investment is to the farmer. So, so that's what drives us as, at, at the, um, 
at, at the front end is to make sure that we're really solving problems that are meaningful, meaningful to farmers. We get things to the field quickly so that we can test those hypotheses um, and, and then ensure that we're developing a product along the side, the side that is really helping to address those, those macro level needs that I talked about earlier. So, so with that, I'll, I'll uh, thank everybody for, for the time here.